Test, test, one, two. Test, test, one, two. All right, and we're live. So hi, we are back on the night hacking, the live streaming. And we have a new guest here. Hi, Simon Ritter. Please hi. introduce yourself and tell, tell us what you want to say as about extreme lambdas and okay. what that is. OK, so yes, I am Simon Ritter. I work for Azure Systems as deputy CTO. And um, yeah, so, so that's me. What I did this morning was I did a presentation on lambdas. I'm not going to go through the whole thing this afternoon, but there's, there's one particular section, which is the idea of how far can we take Lambda expressions in Java? So okay. can we do everything in Java only using Lambda expressions? Like so everything. <laughs> everything. So the rules are okay. that we can't use any of the primitive types. We can't use objects. We can't use any operators. We can only use Lambda expressions and one functional interface. That's it. OK, that's a quite, a quite some strict rules. Um, it is. OK. And so, it, so let me, let me so if I use my slides, this is based on work that was done by Alonzo Church. Lambda calculus. Now, okay. Alonzo Church created this thing called Lambda Calculus. Lambda Calculus is, is the basis of functional programming. It wasn't intended as functional programming when he created it. It was more about taking mathematics mm -hmm. and being able to express anything um, as, a, as a mathematical way of doing things. So he created this thing called Lambda Calculus. And that's the basis of functional programming and clearly why we call Lambda expressions in Java Lambda, Lambda expressions. Yeah. Makes sense. So the question obviously is what does this have to do with Java? Right. So I came up with this idea of, well, I got inspiration for this particular presentation from one I saw in Voxt Zurich last year. And there was a very nice man called Jarek Radacki, if I can pronounce that correctly. <laughs> who did a, a presentation where he used this kind of idea. And I, I, I watched him, and I thought, I have no idea how this works. So I thought, right, I need to go away, and I need to think about it yeah. and, and explore it more. And using that as inspiration, I came up with, with this part of the presentation. So the problem is that most Java programmers are very good at imperative programming. And I often ask the audience, so who's a Java programmer? Yep, everybody's a Java programmer. Who considers themselves a functional programmer. And normally, it's, it's only a few people, because most people have maybe studied functional programming yeah. at university as part of a course. But if they're a Java programmer, they may not have a lot of experience. Right. Or the other way around, they haven't used Java then, basically. I exactly, yes. So a lot of people are not functional programmers. And functional programming, as I have discovered, takes a very different thought process mm -hmm to imperative programming. And yes. I remember when I was at university, I did one course on Lisp. And I struggled with that. And I remember at the end of the course, I had to do with the course brackets work. With brackets or with what? <laughs> <laughs> with lots of brackets, yeah. I remember at the end of the course, having done the coursework and thinking to myself, my brain just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So I, I kind of avoided functional programming up until JDK 8, when Lambda Expressions came in. And, and clearly, seeing how they could work with streams gave me a lot of information and, and really showed me the power of them. So I thought, OK. Functional program is not like imperative. Um, but the interesting thing is that Lambda calculus and Turing machines are equivalent. So the idea is that anything you could do with a Turing machine or a Turing okay. complete language like Java, you can do purely using functional programming. OK, and this is In then theory. the uh, direction you want to go yes. because Turing machine and then, yeah. OK. And, and also, as a kind of an aside, Alonzo Church interestingly enough, was Alan Turing's supervisor when he did his PhD. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, an interesting thing there. So the idea is that they're equivalent. So it will give you a headache, especially when you start looking at these things. Um, so the idea was, what can we do with Lambda expressions, as I said? One functional interface, nothing else. Nothing else, OK. okay. So here's our, have here. <laughs> here's our functional interface. So functional interface, we're going to call it Lambda. Very original name, but I thought yeah. Lambda. OK, good has one abstract method in order to be a functional interface, great, yes. which is called apply. And apply will take as a parameter a <laughs> lambda, and it will return a lambda, okay. only using lambdas. And the nice thing is that we can chain these together because we can call sure. another lambda. That's all good. Now, what we need to do is we need to do a few basics of lambdas. So what I've done here is I've talked about the identity function. 
The identity function is very simple. It, yeah. You give a value, you get back exactly the same value. And in the red, I've actually used lambda notation mm -hmm. because sometimes when you have complex lambda expressions, it's easier to see the, the mm -hmm. shorthand version. So this is a lambda expression in Java. So identity is a lambda expression that returns x. OK. We could rewrite that as an anonymous in a class. A bit more wordy, but sometimes this makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So now we're saying, OK, it's a lambda, has a method called apply, takes a lambda x, returns x. Great. Now we need to get into primitive types. So the easiest thing to do as a primitive type is a Boolean. Yeah. True and false. Yeah. That's it. Now, for false, what we're going to do is we're going to create a lambda expression which returns a lambda expression, which is itself identity. We'll kind of see why that works in a minute. Uh -huh. But false always returns identity. This, this might seem a little counterintuitive, because what we're saying is it always totally, does yeah. the same thing. So it's kind of like the mm. flip side of what you, you would expect. But if you think about C programming, for example, C doesn't have a Boolean type in it. So you can't actually represent something as a Boolean. You have to represent it as a number. If you do a comparison in C, if x equals 3, what you're doing is doing a comparison. And if that comparison equates to 0, that's false. Anything other than 0 is true. So mm -hmm. 0 is the identity for the mathematical addition or subtraction. So there, there's a kind okay. of a link here. OK. So bear with yeah. me, because it does take a bit yeah. more getting used to. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that false is a lambda expression that always returns the identity. Now, immediately, we're, we're getting a little bit more involved here. And again, we can represent that as a, yeah. an anonymous inner class with an inner class inside it. And say, OK, we've got a lambda, new lambda apply, so lambda blah, blah, blah. Yes. Yeah, OK. Let's do true. OK, so true is the opposite, logically, of false. Right. So we'll have a lambda expression which never returns identity. OK, yeah, that makes sense now. OK, yeah. so we have one uh, lambda expression which always returns the identity lambda function. The opposite of that, true, is going to be never returning identity. Now, I know, as I say, it's a little bit counterintuitive mm -hmm. to start with, but this is what we have for false, uh, for true, sorry, yes. And then, again, we can represent that as a lam uh, anonymous in a class. Right. Now, we then need to move on to the idea of numbers. So we've got a Boolean. Now we need numbers. And um, the way these are defined is using what are called church numerals. Mm -hmm. So a church numeral for 0 is, again, the identity for addition and subtraction. So mm -hmm. if we add 0 or subtract 0 from any number, we get the same number back. So for 0, we'll use the identity which we had before. So we'll use a lambda expression, which is the same as false. So this is where you see mm -hmm. in C, if you do a comparison in an if statement, that yeah, if it returns zero, zero, that's false. Right, makes so, sense. So we've got the same thing here. So at least we can kind of, kind of get what's going on. So zero is f returns a lambda expression, which is identity. Right. Now, if we want to get a one, what we do is we simply apply the function that we have as f to x before we return it. OK? So in the first one above, you can see that we've got f goes to x goes to x. Second one with 1, we've got f goes to x goes to f of apply x. Right? So we're applying the function once. Mm -hmm. So that's 1. If we look at the one for 0, we're applying the function 0 times. OK, I get the yep. idea. And then so if we go to 2, two you we apply the function twice. recursively twice. Yeah. Yes. So this, this is now m starting to be logical, at least. Yeah, now I, I get the idea. But isn't this really g becoming cumbersome when you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and believe me, it does. So this is why, when I describe this, I say this is interesting but not very useful. Because nobody in their right mind would actually yeah. write Java only using Lambda expressions to do very simple things like this. Yeah. Um, it's really just as an exercise to see how it can be done. OK, so I won't go any further with the numbers. We'll just say 1 is f of apply x, 2 is f to apply on f to apply of x. OK. Now, operators. This is where life starts to become really difficult. OK. If we think about the increment or successor operation, what we're doing is adding 1. So all we need to do is we think about our lambda expression is we need to apply the function one more time. Mm -hmm. OK. So we can do that using a lambda expression where we say we have n and we have 
a lambda expression which says apply to n the function f one more time. Mm -hmm. So this is what this lambda expression will do. We take n and we apply the function f to that using our uh, numeral lambda expression and we will get the right result. Okay, so that's actually quite easy because all we're doing is, is applying the function one more time. Yeah. The opposite of that is predecessor. Now, predecessor is removing one call to that function. That's not easy. Yeah. So if I show you the, the lambda notation for that, we get this. Oh, my. And this, obviously, <laughs> is, is quite complicated. I'm not going to go through this, because <laughs> trying to explain yeah. this in terms of what it actually does. Yeah. And, and if we look at the equivalent lambda expression in Java, we get this. So again, it's, it's, it's quite involved. Now it's becoming interesting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Fortunately, in our particular example, we're not going to use predecessor too much. So, we now know how to add one. We now know how to subtract one. If we want to do simple addition or subtraction, then that's just repeated adding one. Yeah. So, if you add, if you want to add a certain number, you add it a number yeah, of times. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, if we want to add n to m, all we have to do is increment m n times. Yeah. Right. So then we have this lambda expression. So we say we have m and we have n. Then we have the lambda expression which represents the um, successor, and we apply that n times to m. OK. We can also do subtraction. Unfortunately, we can make that a little bit simpler by using our predecessor lambda expression that we had before, so we don't have to have that very okay. long <laughs> yeah, that's lambda expression words. that we had there. Yeah, so we can simply sense. say, OK, we use m and n, and we apply the predecessor n times to m, m, and we get the result. Good. So what we're then going to do is we're going to solve 2 plus 2 with lambdas. With lambdas. And I have to say that when I did this, when I was writing the, the slides for this, I spent a long time because it, it, I, I couldn't get it straight in my head and trying to explain it to people. And so I was, I was sitting at the table, and I, was, I had lots of paper in front of me, and I was yeah. writing things down. And my son came in, and my son's 10 years old. And he said, Daddy, what are you doing? And I said, I'm trying to work out what's 2 plus 2. And he looked at me like I was stupid. And he's like, well, it's easy. It's 4. Yeah. And I said, well, yes, but I'm trying to use the lambda calculus to do this. And I showed him the, the working. And he went, oh, no, no. 2 plus 2, <laughs> 4. Much easier. So how do we do this in lambdas? Well, first, we need a lambda for 2. two. So we know what that, that is because we yeah. apply yeah, twice. And we also have our lambda for plus. plus. So we so say we M saw, and yeah. N, and we're going to apply that however many times. In order to create, or in order to, to do the equation, what we say is lambda 4 is take the plus lambda expression yes. and then apply that to 2 and apply that to 2. So we're applying it yep. 2 and 2. Yep. And if you write that out on its own, what we're basically saying is 4 is equivalent to plus 2, yes. 2, yes. which is Polish notation. If you've done computer science, yep. Uh, that should be familiar. A lot of um, architectures use reverse Polish notation where you would do 2, 2, plus. But in this case, we're using forward Polish notation. So now what we do is we say, right, let's take out a plus lambda expression, and we know that m is going to be 2. So we replace m with the lambda expression mm -hmm. for 2. And we get this. So we yep. eliminate m but we replace it with the lambda yeah, expression for 2. Sense, makes sense. Obviously, now we have n, which is also going to be 2. So we take that and we replace n with the lambda expression for 2. So we end up with quite a complex-looking yeah. lambda expression. What we have to do is we have to prove that this lambda expression is the same as 4. OK. So now we have to reduce that, and we have to go through and eliminate some things. So what we can do is we can look at part of the equation and we can say, OK, we've got this, this lambda expression here, which has f, and we're going to apply using f. Mm -hmm. All that means is we're going to replace f with f, which is nice and easy. There's nothing very yeah. complicated in that. We simply eliminate f. So we reduce the equation down, and we get that. If we look at the other part of this equation here, we've got a situation where we've got f, and we're applying f to that. So again, we replace f with f, and it simplifies the equation down to give us this part. So still a bit complicated. doesn't look quite like what we expect. But now we say, OK, in this case, we have an apply where we're using x, and we've got 
an e lambda expression where we're going to use x again. So nice and simple again. All we're doing is replacing mm -hmm. x with x. So that's straightforward. And then finally, we have the bit where what we need to do is we need to take x. But x in this case is represented by a more complex expression, which is f dot apply of f dot apply mm -hmm. of x. So we replace x with that lambda expression, and we get f goes to x goes to f dot apply of f dot apply of f dot apply of f dot apply of x, which is 4. So we have proved that 2 plus oh, 2, yes. using only lambda expressions, is 4. Wow, I'm <laughs> totally blown away <laughs> by the... In, in well, theory, you could do anything. So I yes. one of the things I thought to myself originally I would do this, I would do some string manipulation. <laughs> but that, that Have gets fun with that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that would be a lot more slides and a lot more lambda expressions. And I, I just yes. thought, no, 2 plus 2 is, is simple. I can at least get my head around that, and yeah. the audience will hopefully understand it. So it's, it's kind of fun. Wow, I think that's the, the most complicated way of calculating <laughs> 2 plus 2 I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I think so too, yes. <laughs> wow, that's yeah, impressive. But it, it does demonstrate that lambda expressions are um, more than just uh, how we sometimes look at them. Yeah. Because often we look at lambda expressions as they're very useful with streams, um, with certain other methods that, that you have available. But we don't necessarily see the, the kind of depth that goes behind them. And What's interesting to me is you can run this in an IDE, and it will work. So you you will actually you can actually call the the lambda expression mm -hmm. you know say plus dot yeah. apply to apply to, and you get back the result which is is this. So underneath lambda expressions actually work the way mm -hmm. they should, even when you make them really really complicated. Yeah, the yeah. compiler and everything will still handle them, which to me is is it's quite good impressive. to know. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. All right, so yeah, thanks thanks a lot for sharing. I mean, now I know why extreme lambdas, that's definitely an ex extreme example. And yeah, so, so anything else so for the uh, live audience who is not blown away right now <laughs> anyway? So is there anything you want to share with the live audience um, from this conference? No, I, I think that, uh, I mean, obviously it's, it's great to be at Java Land again. I've, I've been to all four Java Land conferences. Oh. Um, it's fantastic to see so many people here. I, I went to the keynote this morning and there's like 1,600 people, lots of sponsors. You can see there's, there's lots of people around Impressive, here. Impressive, isn't it? Um, and again, it's, it's a fantastic event with, with so many sessions on and, and that sort of thing. So um, I've been to a few Java conferences recently and it is just wonderful to see how much interest there still is in Java. I mean, we've got Java EE8 coming out later this year. We've got Java SE9 coming out in July. So there's, there's a lot going on in the Java space at the moment, and uh, it keeps everything interesting. That's true. That's for sure, too. So yeah, thanks for the interview. Okay. And for everybody out there, see you later again. Thank you.